Welcome back. It's still Plots Politics. River State has been on the news for several days. Not exactly for all the good reasons, but this time widespread insecurity and killings in the Uyibo local government area of the state, which is a fallout of the hashtag NSAS protest, which had now led to a curfew which had lasted for days. The state governor's attempt to explain how he is handling the crisis situation has met with heavy criticism as in a statewide broad, uh, during the statewide broadcast, the governor emphasized that he will not watch criminals destroy his state. However, he also denied ordering soldiers to kill the Igbos. To discuss this, we are now being joined by the River State Commissioner for Information, Paulinos in Sirim. Good evening. Good evening, uh... Okay, before I let you have your opening remark, let's quickly take a listen to a part of the broadcast by the governor of River State, then we'll come back. Take a listen. Did you say because I'm fighting a gang of criminals, and then you are no doubt of fighting people? Okay, so be it. So be it. I will not fight my hand to allow criminals to destroy my state. It's because you say I'm not people. If, they, if those criminals, few criminals, are Igbos. Then they should know that I'm not about it. But the real Igbo, the real Igbos know too well that they have, in fact, in this state, they voted for me very well. They supported me very well. So it is difficult. It's unthinkable. But I will not agree that people will form a group to destroy my state. Not only destroy my state, even annexing my state. As part of what they are thinking of, I will not agree to that. Or in any... Or in any... I will not agree to that. Welcome back. So, straight to you, the Commissioner. Um, what exactly is the true situation? Because we've heard different versions that uh, the governor has ordered that the Igbos should be killed, that um, the IPO people should be slaughtered, all manner of language. What, can you tell us what the real situation is? Thank you very much. Uh, first, I, I like to make this point. What happened at Oyibo has nothing to do with NSAS. Okay. The NSAS protest in River State was very peaceful. In fact, police had to give protection to those protesters who were on NSAS agenda. The governor himself addressed the protesters in one of the occasions. The, uh, his deputy, Dr. Mrs. Palebo Harry Banigo, also addressed the protesters on one occasion. So, NSAS was peaceful. And you also notice that in River State, all the looting and the vandalization of uh, property did not take place here. What we what we found in Oyibo was that members of IPOB went on a mission to kill soldiers, kill police, kill, they kill six soldiers, kill four policemen, even burn some of them alive. Burnt police stations, burnt court buildings, and destroyed a lot of property. It had nothing to do with NSAS. And the governor, as the father of the state, wouldn't just watch helplessly and this kind of thing, this kind of carnage was going, would be going on. So after a meeting of the State Security Council, the State Security Council approved that a coffee be imposed at Oyibo. Now, that coffee that was imposed was not only at Oyibo, that coffee was also imposed at Ikoku, Mile 1, Mile 2, and Emenike areas of the state. Now, after the coffee was imposed, it, was, it became so obvious that a lot of people began to uh, drive a narrative of propaganda that His Excellency gave the army order to, to kill Igbos. And the question to ask, 
You so, saw Igbo is just one local government. Igbos are in the other 22 local government areas of the state. So why is it that those ones are not being killed? Government was just enforcing a curfew to recover the ammunition that were scattered away by hoodlums. And it was important that the coffee be imposed so that they'll be able to track through surveillance and search to recover those arms. His Excellency enjoys a robust relationship with genuine Igbo people in River State. In fact, the Igbos remain one ethnic group that has given them the highest support since 2015 and 2019. So what is happening at Oyibo has nothing to do with governor directing soldiers you know, to kill uh, people in Oyibo. And it's important that the world should know that that is not correct. Okay, and the governor yesterday made this clarification. An, a, a, another clarification I also seek is the fact that um, I've been to Portacourt a couple of times and I've seen that uh, IPOB is very very popular in town. So before now, why were they not stopped? Why were they not uh, re-proscribed like we have now? Because even the governor acknowledged that the group has been proscribed and this was not done. Don't you think there is a nexus between uh, the protests that happen and they coming up, coming for soldiers? The and I said, I made the point earlier that what happened at Oyibo has nothing to do with NSAS. And anybody who is living there will tell you that that is a true position. It has nothing to do with NSAS. And the question of why now did the governor uh, come uh, to uh, endorse the prescription of IPO? Uh, the governor is not the security agencies. The federal government and the, uh, the court and at Lord IPOB, it's not his duty to you know, uh, effect that uh, prescription. But what happened is that lawlessness has crept in and uh, he, he couldn't have waited helplessly and watched the state go down. So, okay, now the curfew, when he said he, uh, he didn't order soldiers, you know what that signifies. Soldiers have just been killed and now coffee has been declared, it is only expected that soldiers definitely will have their own pound of the flesh. And now it's been said that this curfew is bringing an untold hardship on the people generally, that the hours given for this curfew to take place was quite unrealistic, and people were crying for hunger, that this criminal element should be easily fished out rather than declare such a curfew. I understand it's about 24 hours or there about. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a security person, but for the Security Council made up of the Army, Police, Navy, Air Force, the police, the DSS, and the Civil Defense to come up with that kind of uh, strategy. I think we shouldn't question their professional competence. They, it is, it is their professional calling uh, to have done that. Uh, quite frankly, His Excellency is so humane and compassionate. Uh, he's not a man that will see like his people suffer. He knows that uh, that uh, uh, he bears with the people for the hardship being experienced. But the hardship is for the common good of the people in Oibo and the entire society. Uh, those who are legitimately doing their businesses in Oibo will tell you that they are happy that this uh, situation, do unfortunate, has helped you know, to flush out criminal elements in the area. OK, so can we also look at um, uh, some updates now? Have the people who perpetrated this um, dastard act have they been arrested and uh, have they been confirmed to be IPOP members or there are some kind of uh, imposters who probably want to use that name? And what is the latest about the person issuing this order that's talking about Nnamdekanu? What is the latest about it? 
what, what, what I can say is that uh, concerning that, uh, the security agencies are the ones who are competent to comment. And to ask me about the latest on Nandi Kano, what is latest about him? And, and I would like to bring this point to the fore. The media must not allow itself to be a dumping ground. You are in the media, and you know that before this mayhem, a video was trending, went viral, killed policemen, killed soldiers. I'm sure you are aware. Hello? Okay, I'm doing the question. You know. I'm aware. <laughs> I'm doing the question. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, what? I'm doing the questioning, so I will want you to respond. Why no, I'm no, saying it's a that is, it's a conversation. I agree, you tell me you but I remember, I remember the I... governor was very, very unequivocal about dealing with anything called IPOP element and its leader. So that's why I'm asking, what's the yeah. latest? Because if this order is still being issued, it's going to cause more problem for the state to handle the matter. That's what I'm saying. What I see... What, what the, order are you talking about now? No, telling kill policemen, like you mentioned, kill soldiers. Okay. And we are talking about where IPOB is very, very strong. They are very strong in rivers, except you're telling me that my information is not correct. So I'm saying that what are you doing beyond the Oyibo? What are you doing to ensure that such things are nipped in the board and it's no longer reactionary uh, tactics, but... Being proactive. Uh, okay, what, what I can say to you, security issues are not matters that are discussed on television. Hmm. Asking me what is, is, going, is being done, of course, you don't expect me to give an answer to that. What, what I'll tell you is that we have a proactive government uh, led by a visionary leader, and what has happened uh, is something that will uh, uh, aid in taking uh, better uh, will, will aid in taking decisions that be in the uh, overall interest of all those living and doing okay. business in River State. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Insirim. Trust me, we would love to talk to you more and if possible, also speak with the governor to also say something as the chief security officer of the state because the people of Rivers actually yeah. want to be reassured. So thank you yeah, so much. Let, let me, before you sign me off, I, I like to make this point again. Yeah, governors answer chief security officers, but they don't have powers, they don't control the security agencies. Noted. As a gov my governor will always say, governors are mere logistics officers. <laughs> and so, yeah, the, the, but that is the truth. Okay. Uh, he, he has, on several occasions, uh, his uh, police details have been withdrawn from him without notice. So if he's really in charge, why would they withdraw him those people? Mr. Sirim, noticed? I'm sure you don't want to go so, into that conversation. But trust me, we will expect to have you regularly to give us an update about what is happening in Rivers. And like I said, we are also extending our invitation to the governor to also talk more on this issue. I, it is safe to say thank you this time around. <laughs> thank you very much for having me. Okay. So... Uh, we will take a short breather, and when we come back, I'll be giving you my take. Here is my take. Not only that it is gratifying to see different sociocultural groups denounce the ethnic colorations being given to the ENSAS protest, it is also commendable to see the agitators play down religious colorations being bandied by some agents of provocateurs. Sadly, it is worrying that after the presidency has relatively acceded to the demands of ENSA's protesters, in principle, the Nigerian northern governors are busy patronizing the presidency, thereby treating the protests with kid gloves. In my view, this is not only unnecessary, it is equally a wrong signal that impede on the fragile unity of the country. An injury to one should be an injury to all. It is insensitive to regionalize the excesses of our security agents. Let me make it clear. The looting and wanton destruction 
of public property is condemnable in its entirety. This unfortunate reaction is even the more reason why the protest demand should be given all the attention it requires. Therefore, I advise the president not to change his promise on police reform. The benefit will not only be to the South, it will also be to all, irrespective of the social status, religions, and ethnicities. And that is my take on Plus Politics tonight. Plus Politics returns same time tomorrow on the same station. I remain yours truly, Kayode Ladeide, saying bye for now.